We continue on today with chapter 10, The God of Sickness. You have not attacked God and you do love Him. Can you change your reality? No one can will to destroy himself. When you think you are attacking yourself, it is a sure sign that you hate what you think you are. And this, and only this, can be attacked by you. What you think you are can be very hateful, and what this strange image makes you do can be very destructive. Yet the destructive is no more real than the image, although those who make idols do worship them. The idols are nothing, but their worshippers are the sons of God in sickness. God would have them released from their sickness and return to his mind. He will not limit your power to help them, because he has given it to you. Do not be afraid of it, because it is your salvation. What comforter can there be for the sick children of God except his power through you? Remember that it does not matter where in the sonship he is accepted. He is always accepted for all, and when your mind receives him, the remembrance of him awakens throughout the sonship. Heal your brothers simply by accepting God for them. Your minds are not separate, and God has only one channel for healing, because he has but one son. God's remaining communication link with all his children joins them together and them to him. To be aware of this is to heal them because it is the awareness that no one is separate and no one is sick. To believe that a son of God can be sick is to believe that part of God can suffer. Love cannot suffer because it cannot attack. The remembrance of love therefore brings invulnerability with it. Do not side with sickness in the presence of a son of God, even if he believes in it, for your acceptance of God in him acknowledges the love of God he has forgotten. Your recognition of him as part of God reminds him of the truth about himself, which he is denying. Would you strengthen his denial of God and thus lose sight of yourself? Or would you remind him of his wholeness and remember your Creator with him? To believe a son of God is sick is to worship the same idol he does. God created love, not idolatry. All forms of idolatry are caricatures of creation, taught by sick minds too divided to know that creation shares power and never usurps it. Sickness is idolatry, because it is the belief that power can be taken from you. Yet this is impossible, because you are part of God, who is all power. A sick God must be an idol, made in the image of what its maker thinks he is. And that is exactly what the ego does perceive in a son of God. A sick God, self-created, self-sufficient, very vicious, and very vulnerable. Is this the idol you would worship? Is this the image you would be vigilant to save? Are you really afraid of losing this? Look calmly at the logical conclusion of the ego's thought system and judge whether its offering is really what you want, for this is what it offers you. To obtain this, you are willing to attack the divinity of your brothers, and thus lose sight of yours. And you are willing to keep it hidden, to protect an idol you think will save you from the dangers for which it stands, but which do not exist. There are no idolaters in the kingdom, but there is great appreciation for everything that God created, because of the calm knowledge that each one is part of him. God's Son knows no idols, but he does know his Father. Health in this world is the counterpart of value in heaven. 
It is not my merit that I contribute to you, but my love, for you do not value yourself. When you do not value yourself, you become sick, but my value of you can heal you, because the value of God's Son is one. When I said, my peace I give unto you, I meant it. Peace comes from God through me to you. It is for you, although you may not ask for it. When a brother is sick, it is because he is not asking for peace, and therefore does not know he has it. The acceptance of peace is the denial of illusion, and sickness is an illusion. Yet every son of God has the power to deny illusions anywhere in the kingdom, merely by denying them completely in himself. I can heal you because I know you. I know your value for you, and it is this value that makes you whole. A whole mind is not adulterous and does not know of conflicting laws. I will heal you merely because I have only one message, and it is true. Your faith in it will make you whole when you have faith in me. I do not bring God's message with deception, and you will learn this as you learn that you always receive as much as you accept. You could accept peace now for everyone and offer them perfect freedom from all illusions because you heard his voice. But have no other gods before him, or you will not hear. God is not jealous of the gods you made, but you are. You would save them and serve them because you believe that they made you. You think they are your father because you are projecting onto them the fearful fact that you made them to replace God. Yet when they seem to speak to you, remember that nothing can replace God, and whatever replacements you have attempted are nothing. Very simply then, you may believe you are afraid of nothingness, but you are really afraid of nothing. And in that awareness you are healed. You will hear the God you listen to. You made the God of sickness and by making him you made yourself able to hear him. Yet you did not create him, because he is not the will of the Father. He is therefore not eternal, and will be unmade for you the instant you signify your willingness to accept only the eternal. If God has but one Son, there is but one God. You share reality with him because reality is not divided. To accept other gods before him is to place other images before yourself. You do not realize how much you listen to your gods, and how vigilant you are on behalf of them, yet they exist only because you honor them. Place honor where it is due, and peace will be yours. It is your inheritance from your real father, you cannot make your father, and the father you made did not make you. Honor is not due to illusions, for to honor them is to honor nothing. Yet fear is not due them either, for nothing cannot be fearful. You have chosen to fear love because of its perfect harmlessness, and because of the f this fear you have been willing to give up your own perfect helpfulness and your own perfect help. Only at the altar of God will you find peace, and this altar is in you because God put it there. His voice still calls you to return, and he will be heard when you place no other gods before him. You can give up the god of sickness for your brothers. In fact, you would have to do so if you give him up for yourself. For if you see the God of sickness anywhere, you have accepted him. And if you accept him, you will bow down and worship him. 
because he was made as God's replacement. He is the belief that you can choose which God is real. Although it is clear this has nothing to do with reality, it is equally clear that it has everything to do with reality as you perceive it. And from the workbook, Lesson 75, the light has come. The light has come. You are healed and you can heal. The light has come. You are saved and you can save. You are at peace and you bring peace with you wherever you go. Darkness and turmoil and death have disappeared. The light has come. Today we celebrate the happy ending to your long dream of disaster. There are no dark dreams now. The light has come. Today the time of light begins for you and everyone. It is a new era in which a new world is born. The old one has left no trace upon it in its passing. Today we see a different world because the light has come. Our exercises for today will be happy ones in which we offer thanks for the passing of the old and the beginning of the new. No shadows from the past remain to darken our sight and hide the world forgiveness offers us. Today we will accept the new world as what we want to see. We will be given what we desire. We will to see the light. The light has come. Our longer practice periods will be devoted to looking at the world that our forgiveness shows us. This is what we want to see and only this. Our single purpose makes our goal inevitable. Today the real world rises before us in gladness to be seen at last. Sight is given us now that the light has come. We do not want to see the ego's shadow on the world today. We see the light and in it we see heaven's reflection lie across the world. Begin the longer practice periods by telling yourself the glad tidings of your release. The light has come. I have forgiven the world. Dwell not upon the past today. Keep a completely open mind, washed of all past ideas and clean of every concept you have made. You have forgiven the world today. You can look upon it now as if you never saw it before. You do not know yet what it looks like. You merely wait to have it shown to you. While you wait, repeat several times, slowly and in complete patience. The light has come. I have forgiven the world. Realize that your forgiveness entitles you to vision. Understand that the Holy Spirit never fails to give the gift of sight to the forgiving. Believe He will not fail you now. You have forgiven the world. He will be with you as you watch and wait. He will show you what true vision sees. It is His will and you have joined with Him. Wait patiently for Him. He will be there. The light has come. You have forgiven the world. Tell him you know you cannot fail because you trust in him. And tell yourself you wait in certainty to look upon the world he promised you. From this time forth you will see differently. Today the light has come and you will see the world that has been promised you since time began and in which the end of time ensured.
shorter practice periods too will be joyful reminders of your release. Remind yourself every quarter of an hour or so that today is a time for special celebration. Give thanks for mercy and the love of God. Rejoice in the power of forgiveness to heal your sight completely. Be confident that on this day there is a new beginning. Without the darkness of the past upon your eyes, you cannot fail to see today. And what you see will be so welcome that you will gladly extend today forever. Say then, the light has come, I have forgiven the world. Should you be tempted, say to anyone who seems to pull you back into darkness, the light has come, I have forgiven you. We dedicate this day to the serenity in which God would have you be. Keep it in your awareness of yourself and see it everywhere today as we celebrate the beginning of your vision and the sight of the real world which has come to replace the unforgiven world you thought was real. The light has come. So today we sink within to the light within. We were told in the text that it is time to no longer worship the God of sickness. It is no longer time to continue to make idols before the Lord thy God. We will hold no graven images before the Lord thy God. When we seem to hate, we are only hating what we think we are. Yet we are not the ego. The ego did not make us. The world did not make us. We are not children of earthly flesh parents. We are the holy child of God, spirit, created by God in spirit, as spirit, forever love, loving, extending. The Christ is eternal. The Christ never entered into flesh. Eternity never enters into time. It is impossible to spiritualize matter. It is impossible to spiritualize linear time. There is nothing spiritual about the past or the future. Now we see that idols are nothing. There is no worship of an image that can take the place of loving the Creator, Spirit, Eternal. The power to heal cannot be denied because the Holy Spirit has given it to the sleeping mind. Do not be afraid of it. It is your salvation. The Comforter has come. The Son of God can never be sick. The light has come. I have forgiven the world. The light has come. I am invulnerable. The light has come. 
there is no idolatry. The light has come. I see the Christ in me, as me. Child of a beloved creator. Perfect love, perfect happiness and joy. We rejoice with Jesus who has showed us the way, awakening from the dream of separation and death. We heed the words of the Christ from our lesson today. Today we celebrate the happy ending to your long dream of disaster. There are no dark dreams now. The light has come.